Okay, this is the ear detailed ready for polishing. Now for polishing ears without losing the detail that you've carved in, I have a new favorite tool. I've only been using it for a couple of months and I've wondered where it's been all my life. This is, let's see if we can get it, what is called a paper stump. You get it at the art supply store. Um, hobby chains like Michael's will have it in their art supply section. And it's usually associated with charcoal or pastel work. And to get this nice fine point, you just do it in a regular pencil sharpener. And as the tip becomes corroded or you're changing mediums or you're changing colors, you can simply stick it back in your pencil sharpener and get a new point which is fresh and clean of the other materials you've been using it for. Watch how slick this works. Now you can also use it to smooth seam lines that you've cut off with a scalpel. And you see how I'm using a slight circular motion here? I mean, it really is a good thing to use. And you can use just the point to go around lined areas that you want to be careful that you're not accidentally removing the detail you just spent so long carving in. And it goes behind the ear. And I'm going to use it to smooth the little indent here. Don't mind me, it's just taking me a while to see what I'm doing here. And again, and to get into deep recesses like that, just twirl the tip in place. Okay. Now for your final polishing, first blow the dust away. And I'm taking my white nylon bristle and I'm just very delicately doing it along the ear and there we go nice and smooth and ready now I told you about cleaning seam lines on a smooth surface so that when you go to paint you'll actually end up um, if your paint going on smoothly. For this I like two materials. This first one is silk organza and the silk organza I'm essentially I just stuck my finger through it and I'm going in a soft circular motion. Now because of the abrasive qualities of this you want to be sure that you're doing a light touch. Okay hold on my lighting has changed as the day progresses. Let me see if I can't help this out just a tad. any at all? Well, maybe a little. Okay, it's not totally cheerful about that. Alright. I'm going to have to move a few items off the table here so I can resituate this. So this is just going to take a few seconds. Um, the light I'm using to bounce back is an odd light, but for some reason, in spite of what the weatherman said, we're having bright sunny. So this may not be working as well as I would like. Okay, that's a little better. 
That's not as in deep a shadow. You can still see what's going on here. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, as you can tell, I'm just going round and smooth. And on a lady doll, well, you're not having fine wrinkles. And the whole thing is meant to be relatively soft and supple skin. I will do the smoothing process over the entire doll. Okay, after I've done it with the silk organza, I will use my brush. I will remove any loose dust. And then I take a piece of China silk. And this is a great use for pieces that you did and you dyed and guess what? They turned out this gosh awful color that you did not intend. Rather than throwing away, this works really great. Now the piece of China silk, you do want it to be either previously dyed or well washed because this takes the um, sizing out of it. And the same thing for the silk organza. You want to have washed it a couple of times because this will have softened it just a bit. Okay. And again, you're just going around and cheek areas, etc. And all of this will make your china paint go on just that much smoother, which is the whole purpose of doing it. Uh, most people who've bought kits from me are really surprised by the silkiness of the porcelain. And while I do do some polishing after it's been fired to bisque, the bulk of that silkiness is created for using the silk organza and the china silk. Okay, now I've just got one more thing to show you. And then I'm going to see if I can't get this to upload to YouTube for you. And the next one will be on China painting. Okay. <clears throat> or perhaps the railroad paint technique. Okay, to smooth the bottom of any of the porcelain pieces. So like the top of the legs where they're going to join to the body, uh, the torso armholes, the torso leg holes, waist in this instance. I use a double-sided sanding sponge. And this particular one, it's got a slightly coarse texture, which I almost never use and a slicker, smoother side, which is what I like to do this with. Okay, this covers the basics of dry cleaning greenware. Um, I think it gives a better overall smoothness to the porcelain than the wet cleaning method. Now, health issues. You do have problems with porcelain dust. If you have a dust collector set up that is taking the dust away from you as you work, this is not a huge issue. I do use a dust collector. I did not use it for this video segment simply because it makes a lot of noise and you would not have been able to hear me. Uh, my basic rule of thumb, it depends on how many of these you're doing. If you're only cleaning, say, three or four dolls a week, Probably the expense of a dust collector is more than you need to indulge yourself in. If you're doing it for a living and dust is a problem, then you definitely either need your dust collector or you need to use a wet cleaning method because the dry cleaning does create dust. That's all there is to it. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.